India's acquisition of S-400 air defense system implications for the PAF. The long-range, highly mobile Russian S-400 Triumph air defense surface-to-air missile, known as the S-21 Growler in the West is a formidable weapon. Primarily developed for use in aerial defense, its ability to engage hostile aerial targets at ranges in excess of 400 kilometers gives it a potent offensive capability. The S-400 is priced at $500 per system. The S-400 system, according to Dr. Nyan, will substantially boost its air defense to make up for the squadron shortage partially. One system of S-400 comprises up to eight divisions, battalions, controlling up to 72 launchers and a maximum of 384 missiles of different dimensions. Each S-400 battalion is equipped with eight launchers for additional use. 12 the projectiles travel towards the target at a blistering speed of. The S-400 uses four different types of missiles, the 40 km range 9M96, the 150 km range 9M96E2, the 200 to 250 km range 48N6 and the 400 km range 40N6 along with a multi-layered radar tracking umbrella to cover its entire performance envelope. The system is intended to engage manned aircraft and missile threats, including medium-range ballistic missiles. Deployed along the border with Pakistan, the system will provide India with 600 KMS radar coverage and the option of shooting down a hostile aircraft or missile. The status of 40N6 is still unclear about the ability of the S-400 radar capability to allow the 40N6 to make full use of its maximum range. Independent assessment of the S-400 performance parameters. According to a study conducted by the Swedish research agency, FOI, the range of the Russian S-400 Triumph air defense system and its ability to counter countermeasures is overrated. The technical experts of FOI estimate the effective range against maneuvering targets at low altitude is much less. Even down to 20 kilometers for smaller targets hugging the terrain. The 40N6 missile purported range of 400 km is not yet operational and is plagued by multiple problems in the developing and testing stages. For the S-400 to engage targets at 400 km, even for large aircraft, it must be able to see over the radar horizon, OTH, because of the Earth's curvature. In its report titled Bursting the Bubble, Besides, the low-frequency radars can only pinpoint a target's position to within 10,000 feet, which is not accurate enough to guide the missile. AWACS, AEWC platforms provide far more accurate tracks, but networking is required to send the data from the airborne early warning aircraft to the S-400 system, which is hard to get. OTH capability can be achieved through Cooperative Engagement Capability, CEC, and for the S-400 system, it would involve using data from airborne early warning aircraft. But, to be mobile, the VHF antenna just can't be large enough for good resolution for that, you need those really big antennas, which are built in place. 18. There are several measures for countering A2, AD systems. Some are passive, such as flying around the coverage area of sensors or stationing troops at a location in good time. Others are active countermeasures, both soft, in the form of electronic jamming or chaff dispersed from aircraft, and hard, where portions of overall capability are physically knocked out, the report stated. One can neutralize an entire system by knocking out just one link in a functional chain. For example, a data link or fire control radar. Since seeing over the horizon requires airborne radar, it may then be enough to shoot down the radar aircraft. 
Robert Dalsjo. Charlie Gao, a frequent commentator on defense and national issues, cautions the Swedish report, in his judgment, has overstated the case of knocking the S-400 system out. The S-400 sophisticated inbuilt countermeasures against attacks would make any attempt to neutralize an active S-400 battalion challenging. Impact of the Indian S-400 on Pakistan the acquisition of the S-400 by India has significant implications for the Pakistan Air Force, PAF. The S-400 is a formidable weapon that poses a threat to the PAF's aerial capabilities. Even if one was to agree with the Swedish research agency's report. The ability of the S-400 to engage hostile airborne platforms at a distance of up to 200 kilometers makes it a formidable weapon system, while its ability to engage adversaries' aircraft well inside their territory gives it a potent offensive option. The impact of the Indian S-400 on Pakistan may be viewed in three distinct scenarios, in peacetime, post-incursion, similar to the Balakot raid, and when war is declared. Even in peacetime, Pakistan will have to deal with the fallout of the Indian S-400 induction. When operationally deployed to defend along with the French Rafale and the support elements of AEWCs, aerial refuelers and spoofers, aerial raids by the PAF on Indian targets by manned aircraft would become very challenging and costly. The Indian civilian and military leadership might conclude the S-400 battalions would now make it almost impossible for the PAF to respond to an Indian aerial assault in the manner it had accomplished post balakot raid. In the nuclear environment prevalent between India and Pakistan, notwithstanding the protective shield the S-400 could provide to India against any PAF strike in response to any Indian aggression, the Indian military planners would have to keep the nuclear deterrence theory in mind. Experts agree that a modified version of mutually assured destruction, MAD, doctrine exists between India and Pakistan. In addition, the S-400 along with the Indian AWAC platforms can target PAF interceptors deployed to counter the IAF raids on its VAS and VPs. With its long-range capabilities, the S-400 can potentially target PAF aircraft and missiles even before they enter Indian airspace. This puts the PAF at a disadvantage in any potential conflict with India. The S-400's long-range capabilities and advanced air defense systems pose a threat to the PAF's aerial capabilities. Options for Pakistan and the PAF everything you need to know. To begin with. When the S-400 air defense system and the French Rafale become operational with the IAF, the Indian air defense of its VAS and VPs will get a significant boost, but it need not lead to a paralysis of the PAF's ability to successfully hit targets deep inside India with conventional weapons. First, Pakistan's intelligence setup must keep track of the S-400 induction program in India. Given the availability of hyperspectral satellite imagery with Pakistan and its closest ally, it should be a relatively easy task. Two regiments of the S-400 are being installed in Turkey where the PAF and the Turkish Air Force regularly conduct joint air exercises. During operation, Swift Retort, the strategy of launching standoff weapons from manned aircraft along with fighter escorts and enablers was successfully employed. Keeping in mind, the S-400 is deadly against large aerial platforms, smaller terrain hugging fighters and cruise missiles, the engagement ranges are down to almost 20 kilometers. A mass raid by strike formations with inexpensive decoys to saturate the S-400 is an option that could be exercised. In 2017, 
59 Tomahawk cruise missiles launched at the Syrian Shayrat airbase by the U.S. Navy caused a fair amount of damage to the aircraft and airbase infrastructure. Syria is reportedly defended by the S-300, the immediate precursor to the S-400, which perhaps prompted the use of Tomahawk cruise missiles instead of the F-22 or F-35 class planes. Priced at a million US dollars apiece, the Tomahawk raid cost about $59 million without putting the very expensive planes and precious pilots at risk. A saturation, swarm, attack with dozens of precision-guided standoff weapons, particularly cruise missiles could take out the S-400's engagement radar or any one of its ancillary units that would put the entire system out of commission for a considerable period. The Pakistani versions of the U.S. Tomahawk are the Barbar, Hatif VII, Air Launched and Rad, Hatif VII, Ground, Underwater Launched Cruise Missiles. Swarm Attack by Small, Inexpensive Lethal Autonomous Weapons, Laws, is the latest strategy being advocated by defense experts. While Barbar and Rad do not fall under the laws category, they are much cheaper than similar cruise missiles of foreign origin. Imagine if it becomes imperative to destroy an Indian S-400 battalion, Pakistan launches around 50 or even 100 Barbars, Rads. The engagement range of terrain-hugging cruise missiles of the S-400 is around 20 kilometers only. Even if a very high percentage of the S-400 missiles are able to destroy the incoming raid of cruise missiles, at speeds approaching the sound barrier, the remainder should be able to slam into their targets before the reloading of the S-400 launches can be accomplished. If, at the cost of a million US dollars, an adversary's $500 systems can be neutralized and no aircrew or expensive planes are put at risk, it would be a very fair bargain. In the worst-case scenario, if the Indians deploy additional battalions of S-400 to cover the full length of the border, the Indian targets in its western coast would still be devoid of the S-400 cover. RAD missiles launched underwater by the submarines provide an option that would always be available. Subscribe Defense Matters.